Hello, my fellow nerdy art friends, and welcome back for another anatomy lesson. Today we are working on the back and we're moving on to the lower back. So today we're going to be talking about the latissimus dorsi. So this is a really big muscle and just a little FYI, if you want to draw somebody and have them look like they work out a lot and they're really bulky, you need to get their lats in there. I made this mistake once before when I was doing an illustration of a muscly guy and he kept coming out looking up like one of those boxers from the 20s, kind of like a skinny guy, like, you know, stick him up sort of a dude. He didn't look like a gym rat kind of a guy. And it was pointed out to me that it was because I didn't really give him very much for lats and you needed to make the lats really big in order to make somebody look super muscular. So just a little fun fact about this muscle, but without further ado, let's go ahead and start getting to the content. So here we are, and the muscle that we're looking at is this one over here. So we are looking at this boundary right there. There's also this big tendon that it attaches to, or aponeurosis. And that big tendon, the aponeurosis, is right there. So it's a big, flat kind of diamond shape there. Now, when we look at where it's attaching, we're starting like halfway-ish through the rib cage. So somewhere in about the center of the rib cage, that's where the top part of the latissimus dorsi is going to be attaching. Notice that that attachment is underneath that trapezius. Okay, so the trapezius overlaps and goes over the top. Then we have this big flat tendon here. And so I want to point that out to you. This big area right in here is flat except for the muscles underneath. So you can see that there's like this column of muscles right there, but the musculature and the roundness of the muscles near the spine in this area is not the latissimus dorsi. It's muscles underneath because that area is flat. That tendon attaches onto the sacrum down here. It attaches at the posterior superior iliac spine and then it goes around a little bit of the iliac spine there. So there's our attachment at the bottom and of course to the spine going up the middle, right? So something like that for our attachment. And then, and this I think is the most important part, the muscle goes sideways and diagonal and wraps around the front. So look in here at what's happening. Again, this arm in this illustration is being lifted up. The humerus is headed out that way. And here, that attachment goes up into the underside of the humerus. So it is attaching onto the arm. So it's helping to pull that arm down. So if you're doing like lateral pull downs, if you're doing pull ups and all that, this is a huge muscle involved in that action. So it's really important to understand that this is visually weaving together the body and the arms. So I'm really big on thinking about how the musculature connects different parts of the body in a staggered way so that it's unified, so that it's not like a flat, straight arm stuck onto a body. We want them to all be woven together, right? So that's what's happening where it's weaving together. I want you to notice that it's really forming this V shape on the outside of the body. So again, if we didn't have this whole situation with the shoulder, if we didn't have the scapula and the clavicle on the front holding all this out, we wouldn't have this triangular shape to the tops of our bodies, which we do. Instead, our bodies would follow this rib cage, and that's the kind of shape we would have. So that latissimus dorsi, you know, sometimes we can see indentations here at the bottom. Sometimes we can see indentations here at the top, and we can see a little ridge there, but not always. But what we can always see, regardless of the composition of the person, regardless of the kind of musculature that they have, regardless of just their body type, we can always see this part coming out and forming a bit of an angle, attaching visually 
the torso and the arm together and weaving it together. Now, before we move on to the other images, I also want to point out where the muscle is the bulkiest. So in here in this section, not necessarily. This is where it'll be a little bit flatter. Those muscle fibers are still a little bit flat, though it can be built up in very muscular people. But in this section here is where we start to see a lot of bulk on certain people. Here is somebody with the arms down, so we're not seeing where it attaches. I'm only going to be on here for just a second because this picture is just a little pixelated, not the highest quality. So there's our latissimus dorsi, and there is the aponeurosis right there, that big flat tendon. Once again, you can see that the whole thing is being overlapped by that trapezius. And finally, here's just a little bit more of a side view. Again, the aponeurosis here, following the sacrum and going a little ways up the spine of the ilium. And then you can see here how it's wrapping around the front, attaching underneath in the armpit. So it's like this. There are a couple little fingers of lats or something there, but mostly what we're talking about is that big flat shape, and then we can see a little bit of it on the other side. So if you remember any of the anatomy from the chest, this guy right here, these are the pectorals coming upward. So the deltoid is actually gonna be on the other side of the body around about in here, and we just can't see it right now. But this whole thing right there, that is our pectoral muscle. And if you remember from that, the pectoral goes from the rib cage and then attaches onto the humerus and it forms this front boundary of the armpit. So if you look at an armpit being lifted up, it's kind of like it has a front boundary and a back boundary, and then there's the armpit tucked in there. So that's what this latissimus dorsi is doing. The pectoral is the front of that armpit, and then this latissimus dorsi right here is that back wall of the armpit. So it adds that triangular shape, it creates a little bit of bulk and thickness there, and then it creates that back wall of the armpit. Now, just an FYI, this attachment goes in between the bicep. So here is the bicep and the triceps. So the triceps are back here. All right, in between we have a brachialis. We have, you know, just some muscles that we don't talk about quite as much. They're not as prominent, but that is the basic idea here that we're going in between the bicep and the tricep and inserting there. So let's look at the armpit on this side first. Again, we have the pectorals here. And they'll be under the breast coming around this way. And then here is our deltoid over the top. Now right here, boom, that guy, that's our latissimus dorsi. So the latissimus dorsi is wrapping around. It's inserting right in here. And then here we've got the serratus taking over here and the rib cage. So we're not seeing much more of the latissimus dorsi other than this. And that is where it's going to do this kind of a thing. It's just going to wrap around the back. So if we could see through the back, it would be going that way. Now let's look at the armpit on the other side. Once again, here are the pectorals forming that front wall going underneath the breast somewhere in here. And then here is our stretched out latissimus dorsi and that attachment. And then once again, remember, here are the biceps and then in the back here are the triceps. Let's actually look at that over here too. So we have pectorals, latissimus dorsi, and then over here we have pectorals, latissimus dorsi, bicep, the tricep. Here's another armpit view. You've got the pectorals here, the P for pectorals. Latissimus dorsi is right here. And you can see that top edge just a little bit before it disappears. And so it, all the fibers are going that way. Your latissimus dorsi there. That latissimus dorsi goes here and then notice right in here, you can see the indentation of the edge of the latissimus dorsi continuing underneath the skin. Once again, over here, we have abdominals and obliques, external obliques. 
Here's that sacrum. You can see a little indentation here and here for the posterior superior iliac spine. So that sacrum is going this way. So it is around about in here that we have that attachment. Here's the spine going up somewhere around the center of the rib cage is where this would attach. So I don't really see the evidence of it. I'm just putting in what I know. And then this one would wrap around the other way. And again, that aponeurosis is about that much. All right, now let's go ahead and add this to our uh, skeleton diagram. Okay, here we are with our muscly guys again. And once again, I have the image off to the side so that we can just keep an eye on it as we're drawing. So remember, it's somewhere around that middle of the rib cage where we're going to attach the latissimus dorsi with the trapezius going over the top. Now here in this position, we cannot see around the front to where this attaches. So I'm just gonna go ahead and have it go sideways and just start to angle up a little bit at the side so that I know what it's trying to express. Make that edge pretty clear. So here's the window where there are a bunch of small muscles in the shoulder girdle that we're skipping for now. But just keep in mind, there are some different indentations in there that you will see from the muscles in there. Then we go down the spine to the sacrum. We follow the edge of the sacrum to that posterior superior iliac spine right here. And then just follow that iliac spine a little ways up. So I'll do it on this side too. All right, and then I'm just gonna outline that part. We can follow that angle inwards toward that connection on the iliac spine. Our aponeurosis is going to be somewhere around in here. So the muscle fibers from up at the top by the armpit, they're gonna fan outwards because they're all kind of going to one part. And then from this aponeurosis, they're all just gonna be pointed toward that insertion point under the armpit. Now with our side view, we can follow that spine for the aponeurosis down to that sacrum in here. And then we're going to look just basically toward the armpit in here. Now remember, all of this is aponeurosis, not gonna have muscle fibers. And then it's somewhere around that middle of the spine. All right, let's do our muscle fibers. Okay, one final thing to do here, and that is to show just a tiny bit where we would be able to see this around the front. So I left just a teeny tiny bit of room, and I'm not even really sure that would line up exactly, because uh, it should be going toward the humerus, right? It should be going kind of this way. But I just left a little bit there because, you know, often we can see that latissimus dorsi wrapping around the front. This video features highlights from a full drawing lesson, which can be found on patreon.com slash school of real estate. There you will find extended lessons, multiple examples, reference photos, and other tutorials. Check out patreon.com slash school of real estate.